without further ado, I'm going to call up the stage director Chris Swanberg and star Kobe Smulders. <laughs> around and make that my soundtrack no, for my life. I've never walked up anywhere by an organ before. <laughs> Weirdly, I have. <laughs> I have I have not. It's my first time as well. Um, Hi guys. Wow, thanks for coming. I feel like we should start singing a song when we do it. Or we're done. Uh, so, I don't know. Yeah, thanks for coming. And we'll be here after for Q&A. Do you want to say anything else to introduce? No, I'm going to be outside looking at that sweet car. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Enjoy. Yeah, Enjoy. Thank we you. hope you like it. Shot Chicago. Maybe cool news, Tasha is back with me from the Dissolve. And let us bring out our guest, uh, the director of the film, uh, Ms. Chris Swanberg, and the star of the film, Cody Smalls. <laughs> I, I was wondering if anyone here that was involved in the film could just stand up really fast. Do it. Look at that. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You guys great. Yeah. We shot it here in Chicago. You recognize it. That's actually a really good place to start. I, I was going to make a joke about uh, how great it is to have the star of the film here with us, the star of the film being Chicago. Uh, what, was, what was it like working in Chicago? What was your location shooting like? Was there sort of a, it, it seems like we see a lot of what they call the real Chicago, just like neighborhoods and alleys. What was your philosophy with shooting with Chicago? Um, well, shoot, first of all, shooting in Chicago was really easy. Um, and uh, we worked a lot with the Chicago Film Office and they helped us tremendously, um, connected us with the Field Museum, who was wonderful, um, and you know, helped us find hospitals and get permits and things like that. Um, all that stuff was really great. And what's nice about a town like Chicago is that Chicago is familiar enough with with film that they're, you know, it's not like shooting in like a small town in Kansas or something that's never had a film production there, but at the same time, um, it's not like Los Angeles where people are shooting constantly and um, they're, you know, nobody's really over it. Everybody's kind of still excited. So it was, uh, it was a really great experience. Uh, I'm curious, I, I think I had read somewhere that you did spend a certain small part of your life being a teacher in a inner city school? Yeah, school. yeah, a lot of the film is really autobiographical. I used to teach high school on the west side of Chicago. I taught at Orr High School on Chicago and Pulaski. I taught film and video production there um, for a few years, and then I did get laid off. And um, uh, yeah, so it was definitely inspired by uh, the relationships that I had with my kids there. and. Um, one student in particular, after um, she graduated um, and I was no longer teaching, called me to tell me that she was pregnant when she was 19. Um, and at the time, I was pregnant with my son, um, who's now four. Um, I was six months pregnant. And it was just such a unique relationship to be in during that time for me, because I had uh, a lot of the same anxieties that Kobe's character is going through in the film. You know, and I was I was worried about you know whether I should use cloth diapers or disposable diapers or you know trying to make my own baby food and just all of these sort of like middle class like anxieties about like how to have the best baby possible and those were things that like my student was not worried about at all um, and she had her own very real concerns um, that really put mine in perspective. Um, so. It, you know, I thought that that was, relationship was so special and I really wanted to portray it in a film, tell that story. Kobe, this is a question I almost wanted to ask with the last film. It seems like everything we see you in, you kind of switch between, between comedy and drama. It lets like directors know that, that those are both modes that you're comfortable working in. But is there one that you're more comfortable working in or that you prefer? Is there one that's I know, more fun or more fulfilling for you? I like to be really funny. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, 
I, I think that I think that like life, everything is a little bit dark and a little bit funny sometimes, and I think that that's sort of the way that we live. And so uh, I'm interested in films that sort of display display both. Yeah, I mean, even in the sitcom, even on How I Met Your Mother, I mean, there were some some pretty heavy moments that were happening within that sitcom. I don't think that every sitcom is like that, but luckily for me, um, we were able to sort of play with both. I'm wondering. Uh, I think th there might be a, a, a thought going on around there that films about pregnancy have kind of, we've seen everything we can see about it. And what I loved about watching this movie at South by Southwest was, I'm like, well, it's almost like you looked at how other films did and say, okay, now let's, let's do it right. Let's see how it really is. Let's, let's avoid the cliches. Let's destroy the cliches, uh, you know, and I, but I, I, was that a was that a conscious thought? Like, let's try to make. You know, this it wasn't. It, it really was, it wasn't conscious in the sense that I was like, I'm set out to make a pregnancy movie. <laughs> um, but it was it, it was part of the story that I wanted to tell, and I didn't quite realize it until I was in pre-production. We were looking. Um, we were talking, I was talking with my DP about how to film the birth scene, and I really wanted it to be um, accurate to my own experience um, having a baby. And when I, but you know, we wanted to kind of just look and see how other people did it to just look at shots and, and how, they, how they faked a baby coming out of a vagina. Um, and, and so we were watching them, and they're all, all these pregnancy movies are told from the male perspective. Um, and that was really surprising to me, and I didn't really, it didn't really resonate with me until I was looking at that stuff, and I was like, wow, this is definitely a female experience that isn't often told from the female perspective. I thought that was so strange. Um, and so, in a way, it makes it really unique, <laughs> just that in itself. And then the other thing, and this is how Kobe and I really connected about the script, was, you know, I, I didn't, the things that, um, the sort of identity crisis and the, the conflict that uh, Samantha's going through in the film, I didn't feel so much when I was pregnant, but I felt a lot when my son was born um, and I had this newborn baby, newborn baby, I was staying home with him and I felt, um, I felt un unsatisfied with uh, just being a, a full-time mom. And then I felt really guilty about feeling unsatisfied for being a full-time mom. And it was just like constant back and forth. Um, in my own head, and that is something, you know, stuff that I tried to talk to my husband about, and he was supportive and he listened, but he didn't really get. Um, it's something I felt really alone uh, with. And then since uh, we've been showing the film, so many women have come up to us afterwards, and men too, and just said, this was my experience, this is what I was going through, and I've never seen it in film before, or this is what my wife went through, and I didn't ever really understand her perspective, and so, you know, I I do feel like it's a really unique sort of uh, story because of that. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, of like how you sort of connected with script your own feelings about motherhood? Yeah, um, I, I very much agree with everything you just said. I mean, I think it's um, I, I I I totally connected into the you know the the sacrifice that you make when you have a child and and um, and why that even has to be you know I think it's it's, it's very hard to like live in this world where you, you sort of have to you're asked to choose a lot and listen I live in a very privileged place in my life where I'm able to have kids and have a career but a lot of women you know they have to sort of choose one or the other and it's it's, it's a very hard choice for women and I really connected to that and especially I thought it was very interesting how in this film we were able to sort of parallel these two women and like you said like the choices that like the things that we deal with with is it organic <laughs> you know it, it is just not sort of a plight that someone like Gail's character um, Jasmine has to really think about so much yeah and that sort of decision of whether to stay home or whether to work was 
is still something, and I'm pregnant again. I don't know if you can tell from back there. <laughs> she ate a lot of fries at dinner. Just <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm six months pregnant, and I'm so I'm having my second child. And and even though I worked a lot of this stuff out with my first pregnancy, it's sort of it's still coming back to me. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm definitely gonna. You know, my husband is uh, shooting a film in July, or we're due in August. He's shooting a film in July, and then he was like, okay, and then I'm gonna take the month of. August off and then in September I'm going to do this and it's just really different if you're nursing and you're a mom and you can't really imagine kind of like just you can't just go back full force like that um, but but even that sort of the the that choice as stressful as, as it is is a is a privilege and that's something that I wanted to to portray in this film, and, and that's what's so great about having that parallel with Jasmine is she wasn't able to make that choice. If she could have stopped working, you know, at the grocery store and stayed home with her child full time, she would have loved to have done that, I think. And also, I feel like the great thing about this film is that she's kind of the happier one. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's kind of like the one who's like, and it's gonna be great. Yeah. And Samantha's character is having a way more challenging time, which I thought was very, very true to life. I think just as uh, with the last one, um, we're going to ask a couple more questions, and then we're going to open up the floor uh, for Q&A. We've got a mic down here. If you want to be thinking about your questions, um, if you want to get first jump on the mic, you can feel free to line up, um, or just give us a minute or so. In the same way, you were, you were talking about things that you see in this movie that, that you don't see in other movies about pregnancy. In the same way, that relationship between Sam and Jasmine is just something I've seen so little of in film. That the idea of two women of different ages, of different races, of different classes, forming this friendship. And the film feels so smart about all of those things and about avoiding a lot of like the big cinematic cliches about drama about all these things. So I was wondering, as you were navigating that, if you were thinking again about specific things you wanted to avoid or more specific things that you wanted to positively do. Yeah, I mean, I, there, there's just, you know, there's a handful of movies that use this sort of the great white hope trope of like this, usually a white woman coming into an inner city classroom and sort of saving all the lives of these kids. And um, I mean, certainly that's not realistic and it's sort of hard to, hard to watch over and over again, and I think. Um, but what, what is interesting is that if you're, if you're living a middle-class existence and you're working a middle-class job, you're not typically, you're not typically um, around people of a different social class than you, and there's not the opportunity to strike up a friendship, and teaching is one of those ways, and it was sort of certainly the way for me um, to even be exposed to this different culture and different community and these kids. And, um, and so I think that, yeah, it, it, there's probably not a lot of films about people of different social classes uh, having relationships because it doesn't happen a lot in real life. Um, people usually stick with the social class that they're in and that's the relationships that they form. Um, but I was hyper aware of all of the, you know, the cliches and I definitely wanted to avoid the sense of this woman coming in and saving this girl. Um, and, but I did, you know, I did want to honor the community that I was familiar with and I did want to um, portray that culture accurately as, as I could. Um, and so, you know, the neighborhood that she lives in is not a great neighborhood. We filmed it in Inglewood and we filmed in Garfield Park. And those are tough places to live. And there's certainly, um, you know, drugs and gang violence, etc. But there's also families that live there, that love each other, that work. Um, and that's something that we don't get to see a lot of. Um, and so that's something that I was, you know, very conscious of portraying. Uh, one last question and we'll start. Um, I, I want to ask you about Gail, both about finding her, what was it about her that that you really loved and was she was the right one, and then Kobe, what, just working with her and getting to know her, and because when we meet them, they're already friends, so we don't have to go through that getting to know you stuff. They're already there. Uh, they just have this new thing that they have in common now, so, but I'm sorry, like, tell me about Finding her and working. We uh, we found her. We put out you know an open casting call sort of all over the country to look for her. Um, it was not easy to go to uh, Hollywood and with the traditional 
routes um, and go to the talent agencies there. They had very few ideas for a, a young African-American actress. One of them, one of the ideas they gave me was Eddie Murphy's daughter, who is like 29 and a model and has no acting experience. Um, but, so we really had to find her. And, um, and so we got a lot of tapes from all over the country and we did see a lot of girls in Chicago, but Gail really blew it out of the water with her audition and then we, we, I Skyped with her and then we brought her to Chicago to meet her and she was just, she's so open, she's so, um, she's so enthusiastic and she's just so talented and so easy to direct. And if, you know, if I asked her to make a minor change that uh, I wasn't even sure I was articulating correctly, she, we would do another take and she would just nail it. She was just really good. And you guys became friends right away, right? <laughs> yeah. The funny thing about Gail is, how old is Gail? She's, she's 21. She's 21. So I'm 33, and <laughs> in my mind, I was like, uh, Gail and I are pretty much the same age. <laughs> like, she totally gets my life, and I can talk to her about things I'm going through. And she did. And, <laughs> and that was a funny, which I think you commented on, like, how in the movie, you were like, can't talk to her. <laughs> you know what you were saying? You were like, you were telling her a story about like the guy in your building who was in the pool or something, and you were just like, I don't remember what it was, but you oh, were the like, lifeguard? the lifeguard. Oh, the lifeguard. You were like, oh my god, and he was like 20 years old, and something, something, and I was like, Kobe, she's like 20 years old. <laughs> I was, I was treating him like he was a child, and so he was 20 years. He was, he was her age. Yeah. Um, but I think that that is also something that she brought to this character, where it's like. These are two, you know, women, and they they related to each other somehow, even though it was like a student-teacher relationship. And I think that that is something on top of everything else that we've sort of discussed. I think that this is a, this is quite a unique relationship that's formed between these two people. And I think it's because the, the specialness of this of this of this she's not a kid, but of of this girl and. Um, you know, through this relationship, this girl sort of helps this woman, it, it, like, realize exa exactly what she wants, and, and it's kind of beautiful in that way. So many of the scenes, especially in the high school, looked and felt so incredibly genuine, and I was kind of wondering, uh, what was the hardest part about getting that, um, that really genuine feeling on screen? Was there something difficult about filming or what? Um, I think the we, we cast kids from the, the high school we shot at, um, I'm blanking on the name, Lindblom High School down in Inglewood, um, which is a selective enrollment school and um, is really great. And, um, and we cast the kids from that school. So there are real high school kids, um, save for just a couple that we cast um, for sort of traditional casting means. Um, I think the hardest thing to do with those kids is they were like too well behaved. Yeah, the funny thing about these kids, and I hope that there's some in, in this audience tonight, was, <laughs> I was like, the teacher, yeah, there are, um, yeah, way to go. Um, uh, it was like I was a teacher and I was talking, I was saying like my scripted lines. And it was like dead quiet. Like none of the students were talking to each other. And I said to them, I was like, you guys, if I was like your real teacher, you'd be like talking, you'd be texting, you'd be doing all these things, but they were so well behaved. <laughs> and they were so good that they, they didn't want to talk to me. We had to, and, and, and definitely when, they'll, when they see the film, and if any of you guys are here, you'll notice that we, we did a lot of sneaking. So yeah. we would walk while we were like, quote, like setting up or whatever, Kobe would be talking to them and we would just be like pretending like we were messing with a camera or something and we would just be like just really focusing the show. Yeah, just we really were just, to focus on so that. we would like, they would be just like talking to each other and we would like just be filming them without them knowing it. <laughs> That's awesome. it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you. And both Chris and Kobe have said they will be in the lounge, so let them go out to the lounge. And don't, Come and hug don't, us. don't corner them here. Uh, let them go. We got to clear the theater for Bobcat Goldthwait. So, uh, Chris and Kobe, thank you so much for, for coming out. Thank you guys.